one of the most extraordinary and complex inventions of human societies. True monuments to the stratification of time, but they are the trees that articulated the time that made these cities wonderful. The trees are the open window on the cycle of nature, which is also the non-eternal cycle of our life. Every passing day, there is a new scientific evidence on the key role that trees and forests can play in making our city resilient and sustainable under a socio-ecological perspective. We all need to know more about the value of ecosystem services, starting from those services provided by trees that justify the investment of resources such as labor, energy and water. Forest, urban forests have not to be residual costs, but investment. We need them as investment for the future. Because they represent a direct and indirect contribution to human well-being, supporting our quality of life. Without these services, men would not exist and human civilization would not work. There is a general consensus, at least among insiders, that urban green is essential for cities to be truly sustainable. But how much do we really know about this and these services? How strong is the scientific evidence that supports the different benefits of urban green? Many of the assumptions used in the decision-making process involving urban green spaces still are not clearly indicated. And this collides with the increasingly pressing demand for evidence-based decision. And what is missing most at all levels to scientific world, popular knowledge, journalistic information and public opinion is an effective communication when taking about trees and forests in the city. It is a very big problem. We have to connect knowledge to action. That is true not only for uh, urban forests, but that's important. Well, urban forests can help us to connect people to the rest of nature. As a scientific society, we commit ourselves most every day to be obtain sound achievements, providing feedback and solution to the community. In CISEF, we have been setting up uh, three new working groups of researchers, one on urban forest, one of uh, wild urban interface fires, California and the recent events uh, is a very important point for this, and, and, and also two different working groups, one on communication, that is very important, and the other on disturbs in urban and in the mountain, in urban environment and the mountain. The quality of life of urban communities is at stake, and as researchers, as researchers we are working for you, for us, for all. The cities and the people living in cities should become adults. We must take responsibility for the planet and for the generation to come. Responsibility is beyond sustainability. Even so more today, researchers and scientists are ready to meet challenges and communities with knowledge connected. Let me show two small examples of uh, output from our research world uh, in Italy that you will not see in these two days. One is uh, permanent polycyclic plantations that have been uh, prepared and experimented here in Po Valley and that will provide the constant and long-term environmental services in peri-urban areas. both in natural environment and the cities. We have also set up a thousand of these classes around work and you will be welcome to join our nets. But uh, we need to work together. This forum for us researchers represents a challenge and an opportunity. A challenge to fill the all possible forces in learning processes and exploring solutions. An administrators and their visions, with technicians, professionals and their skills, with the citizens and their knowledge. 
this uh, common walk is the main reason behind joining Mantova Challenge, and it is the clear objective of strongly willing the call for action of urban forests. For us, for you, for our next generation of daughters, sons, and students, for the quality of life of environment and people. Concluding, men and cities need forests and trees now, and they will need them even more in the future, as they need it since the beginning of human societies. Urban forests host an amazing variety of research and innovation, and this forum will let the world hear the voice of researchers talking with the community towards a better life and a more resilient environment in the cities, in the planet. We hope to host your contribute, your scientific contribute in our journal for the future and we, we welcome for this. So, on behalf of the Italian Society of Silviculture and the Forest Ecology, I welcome all of you, scientists and experts, decision makers and civil society to the first World Forum in the Forest. Wishing you all a great and fruitful forum. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Marco, for underlining the important role of science. And I'd like to call Ms. Eva Muller, who's the Director of the Forestry Resources, Policy and Resources Division of FIO, just to give a brief uh, word of welcome to all of you. So I wanted to say that we are very proud to be the co-organizers of this important event and I would like to take the opportunity to thank my colleague Simone Borelli who has done all the hard work on the preparation of this. Now, I have been called to the stage because uh, originally we had an all-male panel here. So, I have not had time to prepare a speech. But since I'm representing the gender balance, I just wanted to say a few words about gender and how it relates to the theme of this talk. Now, when you look at uh, urban forests and peri urban forests, on the one end of the spectrum, you have the many women in cities in poor developing countries who are using charcoal and firewood for cooking every day. Now, this fuel wood usually comes from the area surrounding the cities, and the women are the first to suffer when peri urban forests disappear or get degraded. Then, on the one at other hand of the spectrum, you have um, an increasing number of city mayors who are women. And since women very often have a strong sense of the needs for children, this is a good thing because I think children are the ones who need a healthy urban environment even more than we adults do. So this is just to say that uh, gender is important for this topic and I would like to call on us as we move forward to keep that in mind, keep the needs of And we are very grateful for that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Eva, for reminding us of the importance of gender. Uh, speaking of which, we also can have Maria Chiara, uh, Pastore from the Polytechnic in Milano, also has a few, few brief words on uh, the health of the Polytechnic. Please, Maria. Thank you. I share Eva's last minute uh, issue. So, um, and that would be a very quick, so don't worry about that. Um, uh, all our colleagues uh, have already said many things about the importance of uh, relationships.
that the biggest acceleration the Anthropocene are pressuring us on working on an urgent solution for the, our uh, um, humanity, for ourselves living in a short time of life. Investing in trees, investing in forests, is, is really looking for another time, for our future. Because forests and trees have a completely different time. So what we are planting now, it's for our next 10 years. And this is something which is completely changing our, um, our idea of the future. So I think that this forum is uh, taking the courage of not thinking of now as uh, a solution for tomorrow, but it really looks for a solution that is for our generation to come. And this is one of the most important things. So we are not going possibly to see what is uh, uh, the benefit of the tree that we plant today, but we really will uh, change our future if we start now with our um, uh, tree planting. And uh, I think that this forum is also uh, one of the most important occasions for us to share a multidisciplinary knowledge. And this is something that is not always happening, but uh, nature is, um, in all uh, the institution, is in the cities, is uh, in the research field, uh, which are completely different. And uh, there is not so much uh, uh, cross fertilization of our meeting in the same room and talking uh, from different perspectives. So I think that this forum, uh, having the trees and the urban forest at the center, gathers a very different perspective, and I'm very grateful to be part of it. So thank you very much to you all, and thank you very much uh, for your, to the organizers. Apologies again for the last minute uh, putting him on stage. <laughs> Such is life. Uh, now I'd like to call uh, Stefan Boeri, who's the uh, co chair of the scientific committee and has been with us uh, since the beginning of this idea. In fact, it started over a uh, lunch conversation almost. And here we are, uh, one year later. and the facade and the roof of houses, schools, museums, shopping centers. Well, all these are no longer just gesture of a healthy ecology, good intention of small minorities sensitive to environment. These are necessary choices if we want our city, the main causes of climate change in our planet, becomes a protagonist of a challenge that every day becomes more difficult, but that it's still open to try, if not to stop, at least to slow the global warming. Bringing forest and forest into cities means A network that by itself makes visible what perhaps is the real great strength of urban forestation. Planting a tree is in effect a possible gesture to all, an act of civic sense that doesn't imply an ideological choice but rather a new form of direct democracy.
a gesture that produced a lot without cost and involving everyone. Immediate result on the climate and the quality of our own life. At a time in the history in which the rapid rhythm of daily life suddenly seemed to be affected by the extreme acceleration on our planet's metabolism, if we want to guarantee us a future as a species, we have no more time to waste. Thank you so much. Thank you, and, uh, thank you very much, Stefan. That's very enlightening. The last but not least, we have Cecil Colin Dijk, who is well known to, to many of you, as the other co-chair of the uh, Scientific Committee for the Forum, and also one of the leading experts in urban forestry in the world. So please, Cecil, the floor is yours. Dear colleagues, I hope you're still all with us. It's a long opening, but uh, I think it's very good to hear all these uh, important people. And I, first of all, would like to thank uh, Lord Mayor. If you know is urban forestry and it's a hard choice to choose between them I have to say. <laughs> so urban forestry is, is my passion and I'm extremely happy I'm really extremely happy that we have come to this event I think uh, we cannot stress enough that this is a momentous occasion to have the first truly global forum on urban forestry with people from all over the world I think this is really a big step that we, uh, we can congratulate ourselves with. Let's get back to, uh, to love, and as some of you may know, one of the most famous love stories in the world, Romeo and Juliet, has a connection to Mantova. So when Romeo was banished, he actually was sent to Mantova. And I would say, if I would be banished, uh, I would not be unhappy to be bound. these other qualities and also wants to be a leader, a global leader in urban forestry. So I think Mantova couldn't be, we couldn't have been in a better place than in Mantova and I'm really very pleased with that, that we, we can all be here together. So urban forestry, as you all know, has grown rapidly during the last years and the fact that we're all here together in this room, more than 700 people from all over the world, stresses this. And I want to echo some of the things that have been said. They would not understand, probably, the importance of having nature in their lives on a daily basis. So inspiration, creativity, education, spirituality, 
are aspects that we should definitely not ignore as we talk during these days about urban forestry and how to move forward. So there's an urgency, and I'm, I'm really pleased that FAO has engaged over the years. And, and no, I should really tell you this, I started working with FAO in the late 90s, and it was not really very usual or very common for FAO to engage with urban issues. So I think it, it required a lot of courage and a lot of leadership from FAO to actually start engaging with this field and actually become a leader, a global leader in urban and peri-urban forestry. And they join here some other global organizations I want to mention. Thank you very much for talking about love. I think it's about love and happiness. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, the EU Commissioner, uh, Mr. Carmen Urella, could not be with us today, but he has sent uh, a video message. And maybe from the next stage, you can send the video to Mr. Vella, please. Ladies and gentlemen, a majority of EU citizens already live in urban areas, and our children will go on to live there as well. By 2050, 90% of the developed world will be based in cities. But that shouldn't mean that they are cut off from nature. In some of Europe's densely populated areas, one-fifth of country's forest area is basically urban. So it can be done. Cities rely on the ecosystem services that forests supply. So they need healthy forests well managed and rich in biodiversity. The European Commission is doing all that it can to protect this natural capital. Since 2016, it provides tools to assess the impact of green infrastructure projects in urban areas and scale up urban innovations all across the EU European Union. The winners of European Green Capital and Green Leaf Award are another source of inspiration. They look at biodiversity and green infrastructure. They show that it's perfectly possible for populations to grow without hurting the environment. They are successful because they are green and because they put nature and biodiversity center stage. The Commission is also supporting Sustainable Development Goal number 11, making cities more resilient and sustainable. Our urban agenda is helping here. It's built around environmental partnerships to involve cities in policy design. Thank you very much. And now I'm just going to quickly take the opportunity of having the floor.
to cover another important topic uh, which is linked uh, to next year International Day of Forest and that is the issue of education. Uh, aside uh, all the scientific uh, explanations and conferences and talks and so on, and we also have developed another product. Now, as you all know, we're here to discuss the benefits of urban forests and trees, and as we all know, getting this message across is not so easy. We've had years and years of trying to get the message across, we finally get there. But we also need to reach the younger generations. And we have been, as FAO, looking at ways in which the children are learning and receiving information today using social media, uh, tablets, phones, and so on. So, looking at these different opportunities, these different media, we also come up with an educational tool, a software, which is called Build the World Edu. And uh, this has been developed with